Okay, so this is a basic design for a simple piston cannon. This is an air cannon made usually out of PVC, and uh, it uses a piston that moves back and forth as the primary valve. This is a custom valve, and it's uh, fired usually by a ball valve or a sprinkler valve. And this whole thing moves backwards and forwards. Now, air is injected into here, and it fills high pressure into here, and high pressure into here, and here. And this is your barrel. It pushes the piston against the end of the barrel, sealing it so that uh, no air escapes. Now, this high pressure air is trapped inside the chamber of the gun, which is around this barrel. This high pressure here is holding the piston to the barrel. Now, there is also an outlet right here. This outlet is a ball valve or something similar to that. And when you open this ball valve, it lowers the pressure here, as shown in this drawing. And this piston slides backward, releasing the seal on the barrel, and all the air around it rushes right out. Now here's the gun that I'm going to be building today. This is made out of PVC, and starting from back to front, Here's a ball valve, here's a threaded bushing, here's a reducing bushing from one inch down to whatever you can find this threaded bushing in. There is a coupling, a fill valve, this is a brass Schrader valve, a length of PVC, one inch PVC, a reducer from one inch to two inch, and a two inch coupling, a short piece of two inch PVC right in there. For this piston, which is made out of a one and a quarter inch one and a quarter inch end cap and uh, there is a bolt running through it which holds a rubber gasket to the front which causes the seal on the barrel. Now right after this um, section of two inch PVC is a female adapter. It's very important the female adapter is on the piston side because the piston will not fit through the male adapter which is on the chamber side. This is uh, there so that you can remove the piston for maintenance because unfortunately um, it takes some time to get these, these things working reliably if you don't have any experience with them. So you have this, after this female adapter, you have a male adapter, a length of two inch PVC, a, another um, two inch coupling, then a two inch to one inch reducer and a one inch long PVC or a one inch wide PVC barrel that extends all the way down to uh, where the piston will be. This should this barrel should extend just slightly past the um, male adapter that will be on the chamber side, and that is so that this piston can uh, can push up against it without pushing up against the male adapter itself. It should be noted that all pieces on any sort of potato gun or air cannon or anything of that sort need to be Schedule 40 PVC. They need to say Schedule 40 on them. That means that they are pressure rated and uh, you need to make sure of this because many sorts of PVC are not pressure rated and if you put non-pressure rated uh, PVC under pressure it explodes and it is definitely not a situation you want to find yourself in. So all um, all Schedule 40 pipe, especially, and fittings. Make sure all the fittings say Schedule 40 on them. They will be longer than uh, any other sort of fittings that you find in the store. Um, the others will look much weaker. These will definitely stand out. Make sure they say Schedule 40 on them. All right, just one more time. Let me uh, show you how this gun itself will operate. The gun is filled by this Schrader valve right here. This area in here will pressurize, pushing the piston forward. Air will leak around the piston and fill the uh, chamber, which is along the outside of the barrel in the center. When the cannon is to be fired, this outlet valve, which is in this video going to be a one quarter inch ball valve, will be opened, dropping pe pressure behind the piston, ripping it off the barrel faster than any other valve that you will be able to buy in a store, and the cannon will fire. Now, the reason that I build this custom valve rather than just using a ball valve between chamber and barrel is because this will be, as I said, many, many times more powerful than any other valve you'll be able to find. 
Now in total, this cannon should cost uh, just under $50. You have $5 for this valve here, about $4 for the Schrader valve. All the PVC fittings are about $20 bucks altogether. Um, then it's about oh, three, three fifty for 12 feet of 2 inch PVC and just about 2 bucks for 12 feet of, two, of um, 1 inch PVC. Um, the only thing that's somewhat, actually it's almost the most expensive things on the gun besides the uh, the valve, these two valves here is uh, the bolt that I ran through the piston that cost me the bolt washers and uh, this rubber gasket here all together cost me like uh, oh I don't know four bucks that's besides uh, this valve here that's the most expensive thing on the cannon so it's really a very inexpensive cannon to build and it's extremely powerful so be careful with it don't <laughs> look down it Okay, so what we have here is the rear assembly of the gun that will house the inlet and outlet valve. Here I'm drilling the uh, hole where the inlet valve will go, which is just a uh, brass Schrader valve. Um, I use a step drilling process because you have to be very careful uh, not to drill the hole too big. You can always drill it a little bigger, but you can never make it smaller if you've gone too far. If you have gone just slightly too far, a little bit of Teflon tape around your Schrader valve can expand it a little bit but you can't do that too much or else it might blow out under pressure. Uh, because PVC is soft the the Schrader valve will tap itself into the hole that you make and uh, if you do it quickly enough it actually will heat the PVC and form nice threads around it and the pressure will not be able to blow it out. Okay, so here I am taking the rear assembly and I'm screwing in the reducing bushing that will then hold this ball valve here. Now we are going to glue this rear assembly into a reducer, a 2 inch to 1 inch reducer. Being sure to use plenty of purple primer. The glue is always added to the female portion of the PVC and then to the male. And they must quickly be put together. They are put in as far as they will go and then twisted a third of a turn. As you can see right there. The next step is then to glue the reducer into a coupling so it will fit on your 2 inch PVC pipe. And there you go. This will be the short section of PVC that the piston will slide in. And attached to this short piece of PVC will be a female adapter. Always the female, remember, because your piston will not fit through a male adapter. Here's that female, female uh, threaded, threaded coupling here. Again, look at this and be aware that all pieces are Schedule 40 PVC. Now, building the piston is simple enough. All you do is uh, take your one and a quarter inch end cap, 
drill a hole through it to insert a bolt through. Um, you put your rubber gasket on top and a few washers stacking up to this bolt hold this washer in place. On the back side you need to construct a bumper out of an old sock. Just the tip of it here. Now the sock, a hole is, tip, is uh, poked through the tip of it. It is flipped partially inside out, but not all the way. Just so that this tip comes out the other side, but you still have this this uh, ring around the outside here. It's uh, got to be a fairly thick sock. Now, this hole goes over the inside of your bolt here, and the entire inside of this, this entire sock, the whole wall, it gets pushed down into this so that only about an inch or less is sticking out like that. Now, big washer like this, push down in here. <coughs> Hold everything in there. Then a smaller washer to step it up. <coughs> right over the end of that bolt. Then finally, a nut right over the end here. Now here is the piston, fully completed, skirt attached. You can see the bolt is tightened down on that washer in there, so this skirt isn't going anywhere. And uh, it's ready to go inside the gun. Okay, we're now on to the front of the gun. The first thing that must be done is that the stopper must be cut out of a reducer. Uh, this is done so that the barrel can pass all the way through it and into the chamber. Uh, as you can see, I do this with a razor blade. You can use a Dremel if you like, if you have one. Um, if you do use a razor blade, which is, for me, the easiest way to get a smooth inside edge, yeah, you can use the tip is the easiest to cut with, and you must be very careful not to cut yourself. I've done so badly several times. Uh, as you can see, I you just use my thumb there to press down on the edge of the blade, and uh, if you're not careful, you can cut yourself pretty darn good. Here you can see the smooth inside of a reducer compared to the lip that's on a new reducer. You can see that it's all the way cleared out so that a barrel can pass totally through it. Okay, now the reducer that you just cut the stop out of must be inserted into another coupling. This coupling is then glued onto your 2 inch chamber, 2 inch PVC. Alright, the last little tricky PVC maneuver that you must do to complete the cannon is to insert the barrel into the reducer that you've cut the stop out of. Purple primer is added and must fully dry before shoving the barrel through, which I cannot do on screen. Once you have the barrel in place, push it back through another inch, then coat the outside with your purple primer, glue it, and then push it back into the reducer. So here's the final shakedown of this cannon. It uh, starts off with this quarter inch ball valve, goes to a um, reducing bushing, another reducing bushing, uh, coupling your Schrader valve, short piece of one inch PVC to transition this coupling over to this one inch to two inch reducer. A coupling, a short section of two inch PVC for the piston to slide in, a female adapter, piston, uh, your barrel sticks through here, and uh, this is your male adapter, your length of PVC pipe, another coupling, a reducer, 
and the barrel. You can see I made a mess out of this because, uh, well, it was tough to do on camera. But, uh, yeah, so you can always paint it up. And that is all of it. One other final note. You can see in there, there's a... Uh, a few wedges in between the barrel. That's because the barrel was not perfectly aligned when I put it in. That's just two little pieces of PVC that I cut and threw in there and I glued them in to hold the barrel in line. And uh, you likely will have to do that. So just one other little thing you have to do.